you have to want to go to the community because there's really one way in and one way out. Savory is an interesting place. The way I understand uh, the history of Savory is it was formed around 1903 by a gentleman named Robert Savory who started a coal mine. And uh, he employed a lot of people and it became a prosperous community. Uh, it had a commissary, uh, several stores, restaurants, but it didn't really become a community until the 40s. Geographically, Sayre is, I used to think of it as being on an island, but really it's in a peninsula of the river. What makes Sayre unique, I think, is that it was designed to be a maximum density community in a rural area. So the temporary housing became permanent housing community kind of thrived all the way up to the 70s uh, when the mine shut down. What do you do when you live in a town and Walmart's the main industry and the Walmart closes? You either stay there, you need to leave, or you stick it out. It's, that's, it's plain and simple as that. That's what happened. It closed down. And those people, that's what they did for a living. They were miners. So The men left and the women and children stayed. Yeah. And I think and that's where the cycle of poverty began because when the men left, leaving the women and the children, and you know, unfortunately nature took its course. And the cycle of poverty, as he indicated, I mean, there's been truck problems out there, all kinds of, they've had issues where the police wouldn't even come out there. I mean, it's right. just on and on and on with the criminal activity that's been embedded in that community over the years. It was a big change for Sari and the late 1900s, the last century, uh, when a pastor started business area, a pastor Dale Reed, and uh, he would just take a simple folding chair and sit under an oak tree. And when people would come by, he would talk to them and engage them. And pretty soon, 1998, 1999, people started coming to meet with Brother Dale under the oak tree, and it was the middle of three oaks, so they called it Middle Oak Church. He was really instrumental in helping SRI get, be effective to, to be able to reach out to the community and to know who to talk to and, and how to approach them. So it helped having James Spann involved because of his notoriety on television and all that sort of thing. I think that everybody wanted to go, hey, it's James Dodd. For over two decades, for many people in this old mining camp, living conditions are simply intolerable. The most staggering fact about this town is that it's found within the largest metropolitan area in Alabama. Sayre is only 25 miles northwest of downtown Birmingham, just east of U.S. Highway 78 in Jefferson County. I think that helped ease some mm -hmm. of the concern, don't you, Kevin? Oh, I agree 100%. So well, when we came out, you know, it was like we were accepted, we were able... I never felt that we were not accepted. Maybe they were a little wary of what we were trying to do. So when we came out and started talking to him about this, we kind of already had a little bit of a rapport established. And then we SRI, which is, stands for Savory Revitalization Incorporated, was actually formed in uh, 2000. But that original board was founded with the idea of improving the community. And there was a time there for a while we were doing anything they asked us to do. Right. We were paying for hospital bills, we were paying for funerals, we were paying for electric bills, we were paying for anything, get bailing people out of jail. We paid for everything. And finally, at some point, we came to a crossroad where we felt like, you know, kind of time out, let's redirect what we're gonna do with these funds. And then as a board, we, we thought of what can we do, and we thought of tutoring programs, and that's when we came up with uh, Annette and Mike, who've been wonderful. My name is Annette Getzman. I have been working with SRI for about five years. Um, for the past 27 years, they've all been coming to Bagley. They come to Bagley and then their feeder school from Bagley is Corner High School. Uh, some teachers will go the extra mile. Some teachers are too busy with their own families, 
children, church, that sort of thing, that they simply don't have the hours in the day to devote to working extra with children from Sayre. Um, some of the teachers do a great job trying to work with them. No one wants to come out here and do the work in their home or in the center. We come every Tuesday and Thursday. We're here from four to six and we tutor. Uh, Mike really in, enjoys being involved with the older children and so he works with the high school kids and the high school counselor um, doing things with them, helping them to get their SATs, um, helping them to be in a liaison between them and uh, the bookkeeper for SRI so that they get the money that they need. Whoever has homework will take care of that, do their homework, spelling, math, reading, language, history, science. Uh, we take a little break about five o'clock and they have a snack. Uh, if, if they're finished with their homework, then they can go play, and a lot of them do. We'll go play with the blocks, play with the iPads, um, you know, play games, whatever they want to do. The, uh, the ones who still have homework, we continue to work with them until we can get it finished. But the whole idea was if you can increase the uh, self-esteem and increase the just education level, then hopefully one day we would need SRI. My name is Jenny Dansby and I've been involved with SARI for the past two and a half years. So well, the SARI board approached me about um, running the summer adventures, which are basically field trips for the students. So two summers ago, I started doing that, um, taking them to different places five or six times throughout the summer. And I have loved every minute of it and I can't wait for this summer. Well, we've done a lot of really fun activities, including places like the McWayne Center. We've seen a movie, um, and every time we go on these field trips, we also eat lunch, we get snacks, and we uh, make sure that they go home nice and full. Other places that we've been have included the Birmingham Zoo, which is always a hit. It's very fun taking them places that some of them have never been before. Um, getting out of their small community, out of the camp, just exposes them to a lot of different things. So one of the main reactions that I get is very inquisitive. They have a lot of questions about life, questions about how the rest of the world works. Um, they also are always very excited. I also have a really, I've uh, seen just a sense of just appreciation and gratefulness from them, which I wasn't truly expecting. And that was just awesome to see how truly grateful they were to be able to um, have these adventures. Uh, I've seen them really try um, just to work through learning how to be a team with the other friends that they have in their community. I've also seen them experience things like sadness and anger when they don't get their way. And we've had an opportunity just to talk through those things and what the Bible teaches about those things. It's just been really fun getting to be there and knowing that they trust me and that I can experience such a wide range of things with them. I would say that there are a lot of kids from a lot of different types of home situations and sometimes it is heartbreaking to kind of see um, kind of what they go through. I've had several kids talk to me about um, how they have some anger issues and how they're trying to be better about those things or how they are living not with their parents and how that's really hard um, because maybe their parents are in jail or maybe there's another circumstance where maybe they're being fostered or something like that and it's hard it's heart-wrenching for me to see that and hear these stories but I think that it's my job when I have them with me just to speak truth into their life, um, tell them how God sees them, how God values them, what worth they have um, in their heavenly father. And I think that if I do that continually and they're being reminded of that throughout the year through their tutoring opportunities um, and the different times we have just to go back to the community during the year, I think that those things are gonna start clicking, um, that they aren't just a label that maybe a school has given them or maybe a medication has given them, but that they are loved and that they are of great value in God's I'm eyes. I'm 77. Um, I was born in 1940, February of 1940. And this is actually my husband's hometown. He was raised here and he always come, came back. This was home to him. I didn't care where we lived, you know. To me, it was just a place, but 
We've actually been here since the 70s. And now this is home. I have four children. My oldest is dead. I have a son, a daughter, and then twin boys. He's a twin. Gene is a twin. He's five minutes older than David. He does not talk. He, he was four and a half years old when he started uh, having seizures. And within a year, he could no longer talk, no longer walk. The neurologist, we, our former neurologist, she speculated that he's probably a survivor of Rye syndrome. There was a time when uh, I was growing up and we came to the church in the bend down there. Everybody that lived here worked at the mines. But you know, it was a different type of people back then than what we have now. When my children were growing up here, it was full of kids. And they, there was always something going on. And they had so much fun, I thought, anyway. But now it's, it's different. Now you have them. They don't want to work. I don't know what's wrong with them. They want anything you hand them. But I, I'm proud of a lot of people that live here. And, and we're trying, you know, we're trying to encourage the kids to get out. This is not the best place anymore. The community is, is a dying community. It's a lot of older people. Don't look down on us. We try to help us. Encourage the kids. Don't uh, push them aside because they come from Surrey and Surrey has such a bad reputation. I would love to think that what we've done will make a difference. If one, just one kid, comes out of there that otherwise wouldn't have had a chance. If that one or two kids come out of there, graduate from college and make a difference in their life, it would have been worth the seven figure grant, the gift, whatever you want to call it, that Sarah was given. No place is perfect, but uh, you know, I want to see that community continue to improve to the point where one day they'll be an example other poor communities and they'll be reaching out to help other people.